Hello beautiful people and welcome back to another video. My name is Sakshi Patel and I am a 5th year family student. Today we would be discussing the important topics of clinical toxicology followed by discussion of my own clinical toxicology university paper. So stay tuned, take out your own syllabus if you have you know, a syllabus like this then take it out so that you can mark what all are the important topics and yeah, stuff like that. So without any further ado, let's start. And I've already uploaded video on books that you need as a fourth year family student, important topics of pharmacotherapeutics. So kindly go through that video. Okay, let's start. So clinical toxicology is surely one of my favorite subjects and maybe one of your guys favorite subjects also. So first is general principles involved in management of poisoning which is very important. In this we have ABCD of poisoning that is airway, breathing, I think I have done this video, I don't remember. Yeah but lighting wasn't good so I am shooting this video for the second time. Alright, so general principles involved in management of poisoning, that is our first topic. Important subtopics from this is ABCD of management, that is airway, breathing, circulation and depression. So those four points, they should be covered in your answer for the same. And this is very important topic. Most of the time questions are asked. For our university, that is Gujarat Technological University, we are asked one question from this topic every time. Okay. This is, you know, a star topic. Okay, next comes antidotes and clinical application. In this, there are two main questions, no, three main questions from antidotes. First one is write a note on universal antidote, which we were asked this year. Write a note on types of antidotes, write a note on mechanisms of antidotes. So these three questions are very important. For universal antidotes, we are asked for six marks or four marks. So do these three questions for antidotes, they are very important. For mechanism of antidote, it can be, you know, receptor antagonism, toxicity bypass or stuff like that. So there are, I think, six mechanisms for antidotes to work and types of antidotes, physical, chemical and physiochemical. Yeah, physical or mechanical, chemical and physiochemical along with their examples. Okay. Next comes supportive care in clinical toxicology. This is this comes in amalgamation with the ABCD points that I told you earlier. So supportive care consists of ABCD points along with nursing and psychiatric care. Okay, so don't forget those points and also antidote administration also you can write in this, this subtopic. Okay, next we have gut decontamination which is one of the most important. In this you have ga gastric lavage which is asked as individual topic. So even if you don't do entire gut decontamination which would be foolish, still you should do gastric lavage. Okay, gastric lavage is very important. Individual question of 6 marks or 4 marks, four marks is always, always asked. Alright. Or they can tell you what are the methods of gut decontamination, write a note on gastric lavage. That way also it, that way also it can come or it can come directly as a, write a short note on gastric lavage. Okay. Next we have elimination enhancement. This In this there are two subtopics. One is rapid diuresis or the use of medications for diuresis. Second one is extracorporeal techniques. For the second one you have hemodialysis, hemoperfusion, plasma perfusion, plasma pheresis, uh, cardiac bypass also I think. I think. Yeah. So there are six to seven types of extracorporeal techniques in that. Uh, hemodialysis, hemoperfusion, plasma perfusion, peritoneal dialysis are very 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 important. So do them along with the diagrams. If you are someone who is referring to Vivipillar, diagrams are extremely important. If you are someone who is referring my notes, then diagrams are already given. So important from gut decontamination and elimination enhancement is also that there are complications of each and every method given. Complications of hemodialysis, complications of gastric lavage, 
complications of peritoneal dialysis so you have to remember complications and contraindications both the things you have to remember for each and every subtopic or sub method that is given in these two topics next we have toxicokinetics this is something that is related to actually biopharmaceutics and pharmacokinetics in that we have a b c d sorry not a b c d but we have a d m e right that is absorption distribution metabolism and excretion the same thing is reflected in toxicokinetics also so yeah you can learn for i'm sorry you can learn for bnp ADME and you will come to know about toxicokinetics also so they are a little bit interchangeable although if you are someone who is referring VV Pillai then they have also written about PCM toxicokinetics which is extremely important and it is very 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 beautifully given okay so you have to learn that also in toxicokinetics next comes a big topic clinical symptoms and management of acute poisoning with the following agents all these agents are important except for radiation poisoning and i'll tell you okay pesticide poisoning in that comes organophosphorus compounds carbamates organochlorines extremely extremely important pyrethrins and pyrethroids pesticide poisoning they can ask you if you are unlucky all right next comes opiate overdose very important antidepressants important barbiturates and benzodiazepines very important along with the classification you know short ultra short acting short acting long acting so that classification you have to remember also remember what all uh, what all these poisonings they have antidotes what all poisonings don't have antidotes what all poisonings you can only manage with symptomatic treatment so that you have to remember next comes alcohol extremely important ethanol methanol both are very important ethanol is okay okay but methanol is very important next come paracetamol and salicylates again very important and say it's little bit important hydrocarbons petroleum products and pg again very mild preference can be given radiation poisoning extremely mild preference can be given but if you are unlucky radiation poisoning can be asked we were asked about radiation poisoning in our uh, examination next comes caustics in organic acids and alkali now the thing with this is there is no particular antidote for treating any kind of inorganic acid or in organic alkali so you can interchange there for example if it is alkali for the example if it is acid poisoning then you have to give sodium bicarbonate and if it is alkali you can change that so you can remember the entire topic that way. you know just vice versa if you are learning alkali vice versa of it in acid like that okay next comes extremely important topic which you cannot skip no matter what so that is poisoning with the heavy metals that is arsenic lead copper iron mercury yeah arsenic lead mercury copper iron yeah these metal poisonings are very 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 important there are i think stages in iron poisoning yeah stages in iron poisoning are important for mercury there is i think meena mata disease and pink baby syndrome those two are very important for lead also for lead those lead lines and its diagnosis is important uh yeah for the arsenic there is wait i'll switch on that light and come okay i really don't know why but that light is not turning on i think the main switch is off or there is no electricity in the building maybe maybe that can happen okay whatever so uh, metal poisoning is very important you should not at all skip it no matter what okay just learn it and honestly if you are someone who is referring my notes then these meta metal poisoning i have written them so beautifully trust me you won't uh, need to open vv pillai after my notes trust me for that especially for metallic poisoning and for arsenic poisoning poisoning there is a beautiful table which i personally love okay next comes venomous snake bite very important but very 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 interesting so for snake bites what you should do is that there are four types of snake bites right that is i think co copric cuprid 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 elapid viprid and hydropids yeah so you should remember it that way these are four snake families cuprid or colubrid yeah colubrid i think yeah colubrid 
so colubrid they are the uh, now they, they can be local infestation and systemic infestation okay so for local uh, infestation for colubrid there is only local like there will be bite marks there will be swelling there won't be any systemic inflammation or systemic side effects of a colubrid snake bite but for elapid snake bite there will be little or very minute uh, local symptoms and uh, very significant systemic symptoms for elapid bite systemic pre-paralytic stage and paralytic stage will occur for viprid bite there will again be less of local effect more of systematic effect for systematic effect for viprid snakes there will be hematologic changes there will be anticoagulant imbalance for example if the patient is bleeding he will continuously bleed there will be gum bleeding there will be ear bleeding nose bleeding if the patient is a female then it may occur that she has uh, you know what to say early menstrual cycle if the snake has bitten and there might be lot of blood loss than normal so that kind of stuff can happen with vibrid bite then with hydropid bites there are there is um, muscle spasm or muscle pain you know rhabdomyolysis and stuff like that with uh, with, what did I say with hydropid bites yeah now hydropid bite is such that you won't find bite marks on the patient very often okay hydropid they can do swipe 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 in the sense if the snake has cut you here has bit you here then you know there will be very minute scratch you won't even think that it is a scratch of a snake but it can be possible that that scratch is due to a snake because they bite in very uh, fast manner and there is no local uh, symptom at all for hydropid snakes okay there will be systemic manifestation and systemic manifestation would include rhabdomyolysis muscle pain muscle weakness uh, ataxia fasciculations etc those all symptoms they will come in hydropid bites so you can understand the snake families this way it is very super for snake also one more thing is first aid you have to remember and asv administration asv storage what is asv when to give it when it is contraindicated all that is important asv is antivenom yeah antivenom that is given so that is asv all right anti snake venom so those these three things are very important along with complications sometimes they can be asked in 2022 complications were asked from gtu we weren't asked okay next is plant poisoning very important mushroom and mycotoxins is important mycotoxin is not important very much for mushroom there are stages of mushroom poisoning so that is something that you should remember okay next comes food poisoning which is again very important so for food poisoning we have uh, bacterial food poisoning viral food poisoning now bacterial also very important sometimes there is fever sometimes there is no fever there is only diarrhea sometimes there is vomiting sometimes there is not much vomiting so all that you have to remember in food poisoning also the source of the bacteria you have to remember whether they are commonly seen in meat or whether they are commonly encountered in egg or in green leafy vegetables so you have to remember that for food poisoning next is envenomation arthropod bites and sting you have to remember the scientific names for the arthropods okay that is very important but arthropods and arthropod bites and sting it is extremely extremely cute chapter it is very small just one thing is that you have to remember the scientific name which is okay okay but trust me it is the cutest chapter i loved that chapter so much next comes substance abuse which is also the last one so in that we have signs and symptoms of substance of substance abuse treatment of dependence cns stimulants in that we have amphetamines opioids cns depressants hallucinogens lsd lsd is very important next we have cannabis group and tobacco tobacco is very important so from this you have amphetamine opioids lsd and tobacco very 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 important so don't forget it all to revise them now we'll move on to my paper yeah
All right, so now we'll be discussing my GTU paper. So first question asked was explain in detail ABCD management of welding. So it is the first topic which I told you that is general principles in the management of welding. So that is ABCD of welding. It was asked for six marks. Next we have write in brief about clinical features and management of acute poisoning of ethanol. Discuss about paracetamol poisoning. Write a short note on mushroom poisoning. Explain in detail the management of microbial food poisoning. Discuss clinical features and management of CNS stimulants, dependence or abuse. Describe the toxic features and clinical management of venomous snake bite. For toxic features, you can just write all the systemic uh, manifestations and local manifestations that I just discussed. And if there is any subtopic or any question that you want me to discuss in detail, then don't hesitate to write or type in the comment section below, okay? Okay, next we have discussed the signs, the clinical symptoms and treatment of acute poisoning with barbiturates. Okay, in this it will also be advisable, though not asked, you should also give the classification of barbiturates and benzodiazepines that I told you just now. Next, we have write in detail about clinical symptoms and management of radiation poisoning, I told you. If you are unlucky, radiation may, might be asked. Next, we have enumerate clinical symptoms, diagnosis, management of chronic poisoning with lead. We have write in brief about toxic features and treatment of tobacco. Discuss in detail the clinical importance and impact of nursing and psychiatric care in patients with poisoning. Write mechanism of action, clinical features, management of organophosphorus poisoning. Define and list explain parameters of toxicokinetics. Write a short note on antidotes. Give example with the clinical application. Write a short note on extracorporeal techniques used to enhance elimination. Hemodialysis, hemoperfusion. Also, obviously not asked, but you should draw a diagram for the same. Next, we have write a short note on hydrofluoric acid poisoning, management of opioid poisoning, enlist different methods of decontamination and write about gut decontamination in detail. Describe the clinical symptoms and management of chronic poisoning with iron. Define substance abuse, addiction, permanent poisoning, usual fatal dose, lethal dose, intoxication, coma cocktail and cardiopulmonary resuscitation. So all the definitions that I uh, recited at last we are given first and foremost in vivipilla itself in the introduction part of vivipilla they are given so that is it with clinical toxicology i'll be doing the same with all the other subjects also and if there is any particular topic particular question that you want me to discuss in detail or any other question doubt anything you have related to farm d then let me know in the comment section below we will surely always discuss it thank you have a beautiful day ahead and don't forget to subscribe to my channel share this video with all your friends and give it a big thumbs up bye bye until next time also one thing is that important i'm trying to start that motion sensitive light It's not working. Okay, no problem. Okay. Ha, so we were